Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to tell you why you should not use index as your keys when you're rendering a lot of lists. And we're also going to look some of the techniques that you can use to see how much time it takes for your components to render. So without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to show you what the project looks like. So what I'm going to do is I already have the server running, which is a white server or wheat server. And this project is a really simple React application with wheat. And what this shows is here, you can see that we got two user cards and this is a list of users. You could add new items to users and you can also remove items from the user list like this. And you can now add more items. So it's a really simple application. If I show you the code structure, it looks like this. This is based on TypeScript. So essentially you have the app TSX in which we have a use state with two users, as you see on the screen. And then we have a delete function, which filters the user list. And then we also have a add function, which pushes a new item to the users list at top. And in here, you could see that we are looping over or mapping over the user's list or array. And here we have the user card, which is being showed for each user, as you can see here. And we are passing the on delete and the user as prop. And here is the key that we are talking about right now. As you can see, we are using index, but we are going to look at why we should not use it. And inside the user card, it's just a really simple HTML template or a JSX in here. So if I go here, you can see that this accepts on delete and a user and just renders the user. You can see here that the user has a name, an email, and then some title of the post and the post description and then the delete button. So it's really simple. So what we want to do first is actually to see how much time it takes to render the app or the app TSX. It's a really neat trick. And once you learn it, you can basically apply it anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to index.html and inside here, you can see this script, which imports the main TSX. This is where the react starts working. So just before this main TSX import here, I'm going to actually add another script. So I'm going to add this script tag. So in here, you're going to see that this is a really basic script tag with the type set to text JavaScript. And in here we are calling this console.time rendering. The beauty of console.time is that once you use time end, it basically calculates the time in between these two logs or these two entries. So right now you don't see anything on the log because we are now going to go to our app TSX inside here. And in here, we are going to add a rendering uh, log here or a time end log. So you can add use effect here. And then inside the use effect, we are going to make the users array as the dependency. So users. And then what I'm just going to do is a console.time end. And in here, I'm going to call rendering. Once I do this and save this, you're going to see that now we have this message called rendering, which took a lot of time, but let me just refresh this. So in here, you can see that it is 845 milliseconds. If I keep refreshing, you're going to see different values, but on average, it would show you some value around 192 or 150. And it depends from uh, machine to machine. So in your machine, it's going to be different in mine. It's going to be different. So it's not really, uh, accurate or really, you know, uh, having a lot of constraint, but it's still good to see how things change. Now that we have this here, I'm also going to add the same logic to when we add an item or remove an item so we can see what happens to the list, how much time it takes more to render. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to index HTML and in here, you're going to copy this console time rendering and in here you're going to go to app tsx and inside here as soon as we click the function the on click function triggers for the add new button so for this button here and then as soon as that happens we're going to log rendering so this is going to push a new item to the users array and we already have an effect here so whenever this users array changes we already log this so these are going to automatically link to each other so if i save this now and if i go and add a new item you can see we get another rendering log so the fun part here is that it takes about 150 to 250 milliseconds to render the initial time the uh, the array and then whenever we add a new item you're going to see it's somewhere between two to six to seven uh, milliseconds so here you can see it's constantly very low amount of time because what's ha happening is that by default react is caching all the other us but just only rendering or adding the new item to the dom same goes for the delete function so i'm going to copy this here and the delete click is inside the user card so i'm going to go there and inside the user card, we have this on click here. So I'm going to put this here. So when we're going to click the delete button is going to call the, the past cropped, which is on delete, which essentially is coming from the app TSX. So on delete equals on delete function in here, which is this one. 
and this basically filters out the array for us. So essentially this is going to change the user's array and when it does, we are going to render this time end with rendering. So it's still going to show us the time in between those things. So I'm going to add a new one and now I'm going to clear this. And now if I click delete me, you can see that it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because if I go to my code here, it should be console.time and not time end. So I'm going to save this. Let's refresh this, try this out again. So I'm going to add a few more clear and now if i hit delete me you can see that the rendering time is about three milliseconds so it's basically removing stuff so the total time it takes from the click handler to rendering or the completion or not even the completion but rather when the component renders is about two milliseconds to three milliseconds now that we have a good idea about this sort of rendering time let's add a lot of items so we can see what becomes the difference between the rendering time. So I'm going to go to my app TSX and inside here, instead of these two users, we are going to create 10,000 users. So instead of this array here, I'm going to actually create a new array. So new array. And we are going to say this is going to be of 10,000 items. And this is also a really good technique to just create a random array. So for, for this user, what I didn't show you so far is how do we create the user? So whenever we do this new user, this is coming from this class user, and this essentially calls the constructor function. Whenever you create a new user, it uses a package that I've used called falso. This is sort of an alternative of the faker JS uh, that was there before. So you can essentially call a post or random full name, sorry, not post, but random full name or rand post. And this will create a random post or a random full name for you. And then we are doing some magic for the email and the ID, but regardless, Instead of doing the two users that we're doing right here, we're going to do this a thousand times or 10,000 times by just creating an array, filling by zero, and then by running a map. So we are going to run a map and here we're just going to return a new user for each of the array item. Once we do so, let's actually see what happens in here. It's going to be fun. So for me, it took about 10 seconds to render this video. And this is bizarre. But what happens if I try to add a new item? That should be fast, right? So if I click this add new, you're gonna see that now we have this cursor that doesn't change. So I cannot hover over delete me. I cannot really do anything. I can scroll, but no interaction. And now I can actually do it. So it took a lot of time to first render it. So it was about 7,000 milliseconds, which means seven seconds or almost seven and a half seconds because it also took some time before uh, it was interactive. So for that particular time, the user is absolutely in agony because the user cannot do anything. Same goes with delete. If I hit a delete here, then you're going to see that it wouldn't really do anything until this whole process is ended. So now, now I'm able to kind of interact with the other actions. So it took about, you know, six or seven seconds there as well. So seven seconds for adding an item, seven seconds for removing an item. And what does that tell us? Don't render a lot of items in your UI. If you have 10,000 items, I would highly argue, why do you have 10,000 items? And you should be using something called a virtual list or something like that. So you shouldn't have a lot of items on your UI. But regardless, what we're going to do now is that I'm going to actually uh, bring this down to let's say 4,000 so it's easier to work with and I do want to also show you what really happens when we render something in the middle for example having a list so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the user card and in here I'm going to add a log so we can really see that this component was rendered so I'm going to add a shortcut here which is right here so what I'm doing here is that I'm using a use effect and I'm using an empty array as the dependency. So this will only trigger when the component is rendered the first time. All right. And not the second time. So in this case, you can see that on the log here, we have a lot of items. What I want to do and show you is one more thing. So instead of uh, this, I, I'm going to just create, let's say an array of one item, which is really simple. So if I refresh now, you're going to see that we have the same log two times. Why do we have this? Because in the main TSX, we are using this react.strict mode. And this is uh, by default in most of the cases because React in this case runs the change detection two times and sees if there is a difference between those two render times. So if you want to just see one log, you're going to comment this out. 
but I would highly recommend that you keep this on. This only runs it twice in the dev mode and in production, it runs it one time. So for production, you're okay. But in dev time, it's really good to have that. But now that we have this one time, you're going to see only the log for one time and not twice. So this is also a really good thing to know about React. But now that we are uh, aware of this, I'm going to go back and actually change this back to 4000. So we are having 4000 items rendering on the UI. As you can see, it still took some time. So now if I try to see when it started rendering and how much time it took, I don't know if I can find it. So yeah, let's ignore it for now. So now that we have this, let's actually see what happens when we delete a particular item. So I'm going to delete this Tavi Jaeger and let's see what happens. So you can see that we got that person removed and we took about 1.5 seconds to delete it. And that's because we now have 4,000 instead of 10,000. So if we had 10,000, it would have taken, I don't know, five or six seconds to delete it still. But what I also want you to notice is that we did not have any other component render because all of the components that are still there are still there. So we only removed one item. So I'm now going to remove something from the middle and the, the experience is exactly the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new item. So if I add a new item, let's see what happens. So you can see that when we add a new item, we add the item on the top of the array, just like this. So this item should be at the top of the array. So this Esther is the item that we just added. But if we look at the console here, we have this masamito at gmail.com. Now, where did that come from? So if you scroll all the way down, you're going to find that person. Because when you add an item to a React array, it actually renders the last item and sort of pushes everything down when you're using the key as the index. So this is important to know. So when you're using index as the key, then it renders all of the items or it doesn't render all of the items, but it only renders the last item in the array. So when we are adding, how about we actually not do this, but um, but let's say we add a new item in the middle somewhere. So what we are going to do is we are going to essentially make a copy of the array. So we can say copy and here we can say something like uh, users in here. And then what we do is that we can say something like spliced or actually we could do something like copy dot splice. And what we do is we add somewhere in the middle. So we don't remove anything or actually Let's do it like this. We add on the third index. We don't remove anything and we add a, a new user right there. And then once we do this, we are going to essentially do this. So we are going to set users and we are going to just set this uh, copy as a user. So I'm just going to do this now. So we are setting a copy. We are adding a new user in the middle and let's see what happens then. So now if I try refreshing, and now I'm going to add a new item on the index three. So the first one is Lee. Then we have Sombun, then Irina and Tibogo is here. So when we add to the index three, it's going to be added after. So zero, one, two, three. This is where it should appear. So before Tibogo and after Irina. So if I add new, let's see what happens. So here, if I go down a bit, you're going to see that after Irina, we don't have the the tibogo so we got this new isa right here so we added this but now we have this natalia use us at gmail.com now where is that again if i go all the way to the bottom you can see that it's still the the bottommost element is re-rendered and the rest of them are just switched which is uh, a bit questionable um if you if you think just like a layman on what really is happening right there without understanding the insights now when we try to do with index or the key set to user.id let's actually see what happens in this case so i'm going to now refresh this and now if we try to do the same thing which means that my user would be added after irina omar jiangu so after jiangu and before chan so if i hit add here let's see what happens so after jiangu we got this new dolores before chan and if you have a look at the rendering item, it's actually Dolores. So the component that just got added, that one is rendered in this case when you're using ID because React knows all the other items by their IDs. So it doesn't shift them at all. It just kind of adjusts a new item in the middle and renders them. So this is more performant because we are using the ID 
as the key. So I hope that makes sense. But then you would be like, hey, Essen, come on, man. What are you saying? If it doesn't take more time, if it takes almost the same time for rendering, even if you add items or remove items, then what's the point? Why do I have to use the ID instead of the index? And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you are having items like these, which are presentational items, mm, maybe you don't have a problem there. But if you have items that are not really easy to control, then you got a problem. So how about we go to the user card and we add an input here. So this is going to be true for inputs, text areas, and other sort of input as well. So if before this button, I add an input just like this, so this is going to be a really simple input. I'm going to remove this access from here. So if we look at this input, what is it really? It's a div with an input with some styling and a default value as a user and email. So what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to add uh, a placeholder here. And I'm going to add the placeholder as the user email as well. So user.email. Now, if I go to my app TSX, you're going to see that we are using the key as index. And to make things easier, I'm going to actually switch this back to how it was. So I'm going to actually do this that we are pushing the new item always at the top of the array. And now I'm going to show you what happens when we add a new item or delete an item. So I'm going to go to the top. The first user here is Zanil, I believe, if I'm pronouncing it right. If, if, if there's a Zanil watching, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. So if I add a new item, you can see that the input reflects exactly the email here. So I'm going to add a new item. Now you're going to see that this email is, is still saying Zanil, and we got this U Patil who just got added. But why do we have this set still as the email of this input? I don't know. If I look at the placeholder, that's correct. If I look at the other data, that's correct. But this email is not correct. But hey, there's more. If I scroll down, Zanil has some run for some weird reason. I don't know why. And if I go all the way down, we have the last person having the correct one. But the second last person has the same one as well. So all the items sort of shifted up and the last person got the email of the, the previously last person. So I don't know what's going on with this one. And this happens exactly the same if you remove a person. So I'm refreshing now and my person is, let's say, Fiona here. So I'm going to actually delete this Womfen, I believe, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So I'm going to delete this and see what happens. Now you can see that the Womfin is still here, Fiona is still Fiona, but Francis is now Concoler. <laughs> what? Yeah, th this guy. So we kind of shifted all the way down and yeah, then everything is bizarre. So you're going to have these issues when you're working with indexes, but let's actually see what happens now if we use the user.id in this case and if it's any better. That's what we are advocating for, right? So if I go here and if I go all the way to the top now, and then we see the first person, which is Francisca. So we're going to add an item now. So I'm going to click add new. And in here now you can see that we got Pablo, Pablo matches, Francisca is it still Francisca. We didn't have the identity theft here and the rest of that looks good. So I'm going to now refresh and also show you what happens when we delete somebody. So I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to remove Yakubu and uh, below we have Lakshmi and we also have Martha. So let's remove Yakubu. And there you go. You can see that Lakshmi is still Lakshmi and uh, Martha is still Martha. So we are good here. So the outcome of all this discussion is that you should always use a unique ID for every item, preferably some ID of the object itself. So React knows where to place it and React also knows how to handle these nuances that we just discussed about because they can get really messy if not handled properly. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you found this video useful, press the thumbs up button and let me know in the comment that you found this useful. If there are other things, other topics about React that you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments as well. As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next video.